randomized control trials good randomized control trials that have been there which uh, which will address this question so i th the what i do is i usually request ask the students to themselves choose the topic and then you know run it by me uh, and I, I think you guys have chosen this particular topic so which is a good topic and let us now um, go over to praveen to present this paper and let us then discuss them okay praveen good evening to everyone Today's topic on general club would be study of clinical outcome of patients undergoing intestinal anastomosis with single layer extra mucosal technique and double layer anastomosis. It was published by Arvind Roy and Sukhan Tarji from Department of Surgery, Gandhi Medical College, Bhopal, India. And the paper was received in the International Surgery Journal in 13 July 2021 and accepted on 28th of July 2021. The impact for factor of this channel is 15.3 and HCR is 2.597. For the benefit of Praveen or Nikita, yes, for the benefit of the two, two students who have joined, tell us, tell them about the impact factor and SJR. Impact factor is, it can be defined as average number of citations from published articles in the last two years. And if it, the score is greater than 10, it is considered as excellent, greater than 3 as good, and less than 1 as average general. And SCR is defined as Simago general ranking. It is number of citations received in the journal by number of articles published in the previous 3 years. It defines quality and reputation of the journal. And SCR score of greater than 1 is uh, defined as above average potential and less than 1 as below average potential. Good. Okay. Did you follow that? Ainaz? Yes, sir. So you make a note, you have to go and read up about um, critical appraisal. You have to read up about impact factor and SJR. Okay? Both of you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Carry on. The ideal intestinal anastomosis can be defined in which does not leak and allow normal function of gastrointestinal tract within few days of its construction. And it should be easy to construct, reproducible, and easy to teach. The basic principle of intestinal suture was established by more than 100 years ago by Travers, Lambert, and Halstead. Travers in the 19th century has formulated the double-layered intestinal anastomosis, and the singular continuous technique was first described by the Hartfield in the 1976. He tried the extra single singular anastomosis technique. Historically, the two-layered anastomosis was done by interrupted silk sutures for an outer inverted seromuscular layer and by uh, running transmural uh, layer by absorbable suture. Recently, the single layer continuous anastomosis using monofilament sutures shown that it requires less time and it requires less cost compared to other method, thus uh, without causing any added risk of leakage. And the factors affecting anastomosis positively are tension-free anastomosis, meticulous approximation of well-vascularized bowel, gentle handling of the bowel, and adequate hemostasis. And the factors negatively affecting the anastomosis are malnutrition, abdominal sepsis, generalized sepsis, and immunosuppression. The major complication of gastrointestinal anastomosis is anastomotic leak, which leads to peritonitis, intraabdominal abscess, fistula, necrosis, and sometimes stricture. The study okay. compared outcome. Ainas? Yes, sir. What are the three most important things in intestine in, in the anastomosis? Uh, so, like, uh, it should be tension free, sir. Like, good. the vascularization should be good. Uh -huh. And, uh, like, so this will ensure that the anastomosis is uh, good, sir. Like, okay. So, uh, when well, is. One is vascularity, one is tension. What is the third thing? And uh, so, like, uh, hemostasis should be achieved properly. Hemo yeah, hemostasis, yes. Technique. And so, technique of anastomosis is extremely important. So, these are the three most important factors which, you know, determine whether the anastomosis will leak or not. And then, um, uh, Praveen has also enlisted the 
malnutrition, sepsis, you know, and then um, immunosuppression, patients on steroids and immunosuppression, chemotherapy, all of these things, renal failure, all of these things will negatively impact the anastomosis. So, for your information, when you, whenever you are dealing with a patient who has had, you know, severe peritonitis with pus or fecal and peritonitis, do not think about anastomosing the bowel because there is a good chance that this may leak. You know, so, it, then it doesn't depend on your technique. It depends on the general condition of the patient. And also, such patients will be very sick. They will be hemodynamically unstable, probably needing, um, you know, immuno this uh, vasopressors and uh, inotropic agents, which will cause vasoconstriction of the splanchnic circulation and, you know, uh, negatively impact your anastomosis. So do not, and then the time taken to anastomosis will also be critical. So when patients are ill, you have to do what is least minimum possible to get the patient better get out of the operating theater. So, do not consider, for your information, do not consider doing anastomosis in patients who are sick, who have peritonitis, whether it is fecalant or spirulent peritonitis. Okay. Continue, Praveen. The study compared outcome of single air versus double air intestinal anastomosis in small and large bowel in terms of duration required to perform intestinal anastomosis, post-operative complications like anastomotic leak, and duration of hospital stay in each group. The aims and objective of this paper was to compare time duration required to perform single and double aid intestinal anastomosis to study post-operative complications like anastomotic leak in single and double aid intestinal anastomosis. This was a prospective observational study conducted at Department of General Surgery, Gandhi Medical College and Associated Hamidiya Hospital in the city of Bhopal, India over a period of two years from October 2018 to October 2020. The patients who were given written informed consent and between the age of 16 to 60 years were included in this study and the patients undergone resection and anastomosis of small bowel and large bowel with causes of small bowel gangrene, strangulated hernia with bubble opus content, small and large bowel tumors and intestinal ischemia were included. Patients who are not willing to give informed consent and patients with less than age of 60 years and more than 60 years were excluded and patients with resection anastomosis done for perforation with gross contamination of peritoneal cavity and patients with associated comorb comorbid diseases like sepsis, known cardiovascular disease, grossly deranged liver function were excluded from this study. Okay. Nikita, why do you think they excluded patients with grossly deranged liver function? Nikita, are you there? Yes, sir. Why do you think that they excluded patients from with grossly deranged liver function? It alters the uh, healing process, sir. How? Because of the coagulation profile derangement. Uh, no, we know protein, sir. What in protein? Uh, albumin, sir. A what? Albumin, sir, in specific. Correct. So, see the album. You know, you know, you, any anybody who whose albumin levels are less than three have a very significant, you know, sort of chance of anastomotic leak. So, especially in in emergency situations, you have to you know take everything else into consideration, but. In elective situations, you have to ensure that the patient's albumin levels are you know, reasonable before you take them for operation. Okay, so one is that. Second one you have to understand is patients who have, this has been proven, patients who have jaundice, bilirubin being high, the, the translocation of bacteria in patients who have obstruction, patients who are jaundiced, patients who have renal failure, Translocation of bacteria is higher. So that means that there is potential for infection at the site of anastomosis. And then, so even though you have done a good job, the, the infection at the site of anastomosis will then may lead to localized abscess formation and then subsequently leak. So 
the, the liver, whenever there is deranged liver function, you have to be extremely careful whether you should anastomose the patient. So that is a good, only thing I couldn't understand anyway, we'll come to that later. Okay, carry on Praveen. Based on detailed history, through clinical examination, radiological examination and ultrasound of abdomen, the diagnosis was made. And the patient were placed in group A with single layer continuous external mucosal anastomosis and group B patients who undergo double layer anastomosis as per surgeon's choice. All the patients were operated by qualified surgical specialist. Informed consent was taken from all the patients before including them in the study. All single layer anastomosis were, was done with vicryl 30 pack and for double layer 30 vicryl was used for taking through all layers, that is transmural layer and seromuscular layer with 30 mercil pack. Each case was analyzed with respect to duration required to perform intestinal anastomosis, postoperative complications, and duration of hospital stay. The duration of anastomosis is measured from start of first stitch of anastomosis till completion of last stitch of anastomosis. All the cases were follow followed up to discharge and subsequently for a follow-up period of two weeks and patients were allowed to take orally after resumption of bowel activity. Anatomic deficiency or leak was diagnosed on clinical grounds and for leakage of gastrointestinal contents from the wound or through drain and purulent discharge with or without systemic signs. These were diagnosed either clinically or radiographically by contrast cinema or through computed tomography scan. These data were collected and recorded on a printer performer, including patient's demographics, operative findings, anastomotic time, anastomotic click, and wound infection. And data was analyzed and statistical tests of significance were applied wherever required, with p-value less than 0 0.05 as significant. Okay. So the you the two new girls, just watch how we do the journal club today. You will not be able to you know contribute much today so just watch how it is done nikita what are the what do you think of the critique so far of the study uh, yes sir uh, pros of the study would be uh, uh, it's a recent study sir 2018 to 20 yes and uh, it's a relevant topic because a surgical anastomosis is very common yes relevant topic treatment. yes in a, and yes, sir. What else? Mm -hmm. Quickly, come on. It's a prospective study, sir. Correct. Yes. Prospective observational study, yes. Observational study. And uh, it, it defines uh, their inclusion and exclusion criteria. Correct. Yes, sir. We know what else? And a single, um, single surgeon is involved. One. No, that they have not specified. Not a single uh, surgeon. A surgeon, a surgeon was mentioned, so I thought that they were specifying one surgeon, sir. No, no. Why would he do to both himself? Normally, a surgeon, if for example, you will never get Dr. Muni ready to do single layer. You will never get me and Dr. Lakshman or probably Niran. I don't know what Niranjan does. Niranjan, are you there? Yes, sir. You will never do double layer, no? Or you do double layer. Because I was with Munireddy sir uh, for a long time, so, so you I've been doing yeah. uh, double layer only. Double layer. So uh, same so, Munireddy sir's technique. Yeah. So Niranjan will always do double layer. So I think it is not single surgeon. It is always. I think they have not right. given us as a single surgeon. They have given a qualified specialist. Qualified specialist. So all the surgeons who were involved was a they were a qualified specialist. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay uh, we know any other points. Uh, it's an Indian study, sir, which is a good thing and a okay. good impact factor. Yeah, good impact factor, yes. Sir, uh, I feel uh, uh, they have included both uh, small bowel and large bowel. Uh, if it has been localized like small or large bowel separately, it will be a much better study, I feel. Correct, but the problem is the numbers. See, so you need to have numbers, see, otherwise they, you at cannot split. They done, at least they would have done randomization, which have not done. You can't do, so. randomization was not done. Yes, sir. That again may be difficult because, you know, the, the for example, as we said, you know, Niranjan, Dr. Muni Reddy will always do two layers, which yes, is sir. good because it is important. You have to do what you are comfortable and what has shown good results for you. Yes, so. Yes. You know, randomization is difficult. That is one of the pro difficult problems with this. You know, that is why if you look through the history, there has not been many studies 
which have been able to randomize the the you know single layer and double layer yes sir so it is all a collection of studies which has been you know we have collated facts from that rather than a properly you know uh, envisaged and properly you know conducted double blind randomized control trial for intestinal anastomosis it is very difficult to do that but and, you are correct with respect to colocolic and uh, this one because the yeah. uh, Yeah, rates of le leakage rates as well as complications are totally different no, for small different. bowel when compared to large bowel. Large bowel. And also and the ramifications. Yeah, ramifications of a colonic leak is much worse compared to a small bowel leak. So it so, would have been better if they would have compared only small bowel. Yeah, but numbers because of the numbers, small numbers, they have not been able to. Sir, but colic co only, but if four or six only, they have taken. Hmm. so it won't have probably altered much but there is ileocolic also there is the ileocolic yeah yeah ileocolic is there which is why they have probably not stratified it okay but that is a good point we know yes. right what else negatives that's all sir okay pravin sanya anything to add uh, sir i feel Uh, in the inclusion criteria, they've included the malignancies also, sir. But uh, for which uh, I don't think so. They've specified. They have not, the they have they not, not excluded. excluded. They've included malignancies. They yes, sir. Included so malignancies. they've included malignancies. So they have not specified if patient has undergone chemotherapy or radiotherapy before, as it yeah, is yeah. malignant age and all. Patient can be you know compromised as such, sir, which can compromise the healing rate. Correct. So correct. So malignancy would have should have been excluded. I feel. Okay, and yeah. also about the oral intake. What they uh, said is it is not standardized as per the bowel movements they have bowel mentioned. Yes, yes. So when they have uh, started orally, that they have not mentioned. See, for the benefit of the students, whenever you conduct a study, you the most important document of the study is called protocol. In the protocol, as Niranjan said, everything has to be documented. how you are proposing to conduct the study what is the aim of the study what is the method of the study how long are you going to conduct it what what is the follow up how and what is the technique that is followed as if it is surgical technique have you randomized the, the two by the pop is it a randomized control trial or is it a observational study have the all the every step whatever sutures you are using including the 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 company that makes the suture or if you have used any particular equipment you have to also mention which company manufactures it and the statistics has to be enlisted correctly what statistics you have used everything has to be uh, you know properly documented so the 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 protocol document should contain all the components of the particular study and why that is important is there should not be violation of protocol if there is violation of protocol they should mention why there is violation of protocol but then the credibility of the study will suffer because of that so pravin uh, yes sir yes sir kandit yes. pravin ke so so when uh, nothing Niranjan. nothing sir you you are at uh, continue you are talking still talking i thought you have finished no 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 please now i finished no no my i had one question for pravin what excluded cardiovascular disease can you think patient, of any particular reason uh, patient uh, will be on uh, anticoagulants and uh, antiplatelets sir so all of it is most of it uh, except for gangrene probably most of it will be elective procedures yes sir Anybody sir, else any, can answer any, that question? Anybody else? That's all. Sanya, why do you so think they will? Yes, sir. Uh, maybe because if the ejection fraction is less, the perfusion to the anastomotic site could be comparatively less when compared to normal individuals. And there is also high chance of stasis and uh, formation of coagulations. What? Clot, sir. Why? Because no, of... no, no, no. Why there is a high chance of stasis? 
So, in fact they are uh, this thing uh, they will have a hyper uh, not they will not have a hypercoagulable state because they will be on most of them will be on antiplatelet agents so preoperatively we may start stop uh, the drugs i think what sonia said uh, probably is one of the reasons and probably they will have a uh, if they have a cardiovascular disease some people probably will have the tendency to throw thrombi like af and all that can cause thrombi sir do you yeah. think of any other reason other thing could be that if the cardiac status is compromised then the operative insult anesthetic insult may cause problems Ischemia. in terms of the cardiac status which may need inotropic you know support in the first 24 to 48 hours then inotropes by you know by uh, what happens is by design will have systemic splanchnic vasoconstriction which may negatively impact the anastomosis so that may be one of the reasons yes so yes all the three reasons what sanya said niranjan said and what i said all three will work so cardio but why do you think they have excluded patients bill after 60 years of age i think that was a bit strange correct correct i don't think there was need for i think biological age is more important than chronological age if the patient is fit you know whether he is 80 or 85 it is it doesn't matter so i think that is a i think that's not a good thing to have excluded patients above 60 years of age so okay. i mean any any yes. any other th- any negative factor with respect to follow up you can think of so uh, follow up they have follow up till only 2 weeks sir then yeah so is it good or bad later on it uh, bad sir why sir uh, there uh nikita or this vinod not enough uh, time period for a follow up sir no so why complication later ha huh? who said who said Picture. that sir. vinod yes. yeah yeah because usually the negative side of two layer anastomosis is possibility of stricture Picture. if not Picture. done properly okay so 15 days is a very short period of time until and unless you have caused complete luminal narrowing to assess the effect uh, effect of that uh, stricture so at least i think they should have studied it for at least for 3 months sir yeah sir uh, but their objective they mentioned it as to study about the leak only no sir so in that case no, can we think- if you are talking about anastomosis it is not only leak it is the overall anastomosis if you want to say one anastomosis is better than the other it is not also not only about the leak it is also about the other complications like stricture okay sir if you want to like complete the this thing if that is only short term leak but if they if there is no leak if i have done it double layer well uh, good anastomosis and if there is no leak but patients will end up with stricture one month or two months or three months down the line and they will come back with obstruction then it will be of no use that anastomosis yes sir see an- another fundamental uh, difference for me i, th- I think it is uh, you know because they have done it is sub zero submuco- submucosal continuous anastomosis but the you know lot of other studies which have not you know been randomized has shown that single layer interrupted zero subvascular sutures is the best type of anastomosis according to the lot of studies here they have actually done continuous so the uh, probably they have not included the mucosa so i think it is okay because if you in the as niranjan said the problem with continuous the double layer is the if if you if the anastomosis is too tight then the vascularity of the mucosa is compromised which may lead to stricture formation later so that is one thing you have to remember okay um carry on and also one more different one more difference what they should have taken into consideration was if uh, ileocolic anastomosis if you are doing end to side or end to end so there will be discrepancy yeah so what they have done they have not mentioned i think they have and, done all uh, end to they end have end mentioned sir everything end is end to end end to end no end to side so, at all so there will be lot of discrepancy what they have done to tackle that discrepancy they have not mentioned not mentioned yeah especially in, as you said rightly in when there is obstruction there will be definite uh, the pre, the 
the before obstruction bowel will be very dilated the post obstruction bowel will be collapsed so there will be significant you know discrepancy between the bowel uh, uh, diameter okay carry on coming to results uh, based on the demographics group e the majority of the patients belongs to 31 to 40 years and 41 to 50 years and in group e it is same as 41 to 50 years majority followed by 31 to 40 years and uh, majority of them were male in in the both groups but basically what you, what you see is that both groups are relatively well matched yes sir. yeah And coming to the disease groups, uh, majority of them were il uh, ileal stricture followed by ileocecal tuberculosis. And uh, coming to type and number of procedures performed, majority of them had underwent resection of uh, terminal ileum and cecum with ileoascending colon, ileum, ileoascending anastomosis, followed by resection of uh, uh, ileum with ileocecal anastomosis. And uh, coming to anastomotic site, most of the patients had underwent enteroentric anastomosis followed by enterocolic. And types of anastomosis, all of them had underwent end-to-end -end anastomosis. Coming to duration of anastomosis, the uh, on average, the duration of anastomosis in group A was 21 to 25 minutes. And on group B, the average was 31 to 35 minutes. And uh, in the table, the anastomosis leak was given as 2 in the group A and uh, 4 as group B. E. But in the description part, it was given as uh, 4 in the group A and 2 in the group B. E. Yeah, yeah. I think that is a... I don't know right. which... Because we don't know which is correct, which is wrong because they have mentioned both. So, it's difficult to say which is, you know, correct, which is correct and which is wrong. But because... Uh, the further below description also, they have given as 4 and 2 only, sir. Only I know, the table but because, was, see, this is the table... Sir. Most likely, this will be the truth. Because yes, yes. the table will not lie, usually, hopefully. So, they might have made a mistake in the print, in the description. Usually, the table doesn't usually lie. So, probably, yes. this is the correct version. Where group A, there are two uh, anastomotic leaks and group B, there are four leaks. Okay. Uh, and the opposite that, also might be true because they have uh, more of a colocolic anastomosis in that uh, group A. Yeah, yeah, agree. But you know, it, it can be. That's why I said the first statement I made was that it is you know it is difficult to say which is true, which is wrong. But generally, on the in the table, they, they usually won't lie. Maybe by oversight, they might have made the mistake while while describing the thing. That's all. That is the speculation. Okay. I don't know, but that's what. So, the at least the editor, uh, like the editors of the journal, they should have checked all this. Correct. They should have checked it. Mm. And especially, this is a very good journal. A very reputed journal, yeah. Correct. On doing the unpaired DT test between duration of anastomosis and the two techniques, it, it showed us statistically significant with p value less than 0 0.001. And uh, in the study of 100 patients, there were six anastomotic leaks with uh, four of them in the group A and two of them in group E, as uh, mentioned in the description. Uh, there was no significant association between the two groups with p-value greater than 0 0.05. Okay. Why? Praveen, did you understand yes, why is there so much of uh, stress on the time taken for anastomosis? Uh, because usually uh, as it is single it, uh, it will be quicker process sir. yeah I agree but why is there is, there is it see if you are given the choice of doing the anastomosis well correctly even though it takes a little bit more time and uh, then to finish the anastomosis in a particular you know, time scale which would you choose I'll use the first option sir that is, you want to do a good anastomosis. Good anastomosis, yes, sir. Have you you have you assisted any anastomosis being done? Yes, sir. 
have have you seen the surgeon trying to rush it to try and finish it in a particular time no sir what were they trying to do uh looking uh, doing for a good anesthesis to any leaks with good technique so technique, technique yes sir no no good vascularity good technique and no tension so yes, that sir. is the concentration rather than the time i don't know why there was so much of uh, stress on the time but they just wanted to compare to show that the single layer takes less time compared to double layer which is obvious no because if you are doing that you know the step twice over it has to take more time yes sir okay nikita critic of the results so far sir uh, results were very simplified sir but mm. they did not do any uh, uh, extra association uh, analysis sir like, like uh, the anastomosis uh, leak they have mentioned as in group a and b but they did not cross compare with the cause of that i mean uh, either with the diagnosis or with the age of the patient the other factors they did not uh, why do you think they did, they didn't do that maybe they did they did do it and they found as insignificant and they just uh, choose to ignore it sir. no more than the, more than the age they should have done the association with the type of anastomosis whether it was ileal like small bowel or whether it was ileocolic or whether it was colocolic colocolic but number you know, is... why do you think why do you think they didn't do this whatever number nikita said what number is that called subgroup analysis ah sub, sub Why sub do you group. think they didn't do subgroup analysis? Because the number of particular surgeries will be very minimal. Correct. See, see, first thing is, you know, I think as you should understand, if they have not said it in the protocol, that they will compare, you know, different group age groups, different patient demographics, different as Niranjan said, different types of ileo ileal. or ileocolic or colocolic then they should not you know try to do this the analysis that is called post hoc analysis so the criticism about post hoc analysis is the null hypothesis whatever you are trying to prove you have not been able to you know demonstrate whether the the one technique is better than the other so then you resort to doing sub group analysis to show that one group is better than the other so it is always frowned upon when somebody tries to do a subgroup analysis if that if it is not been previously you know included or indicated in the protocol protocol so and here as you said rightly the numbers are so small that it is very difficult to show any statistical significance between the groups as such 50 50 cases so you will have you know maybe 3 4 5 cases in each group so it is very difficult to show any significant difference in this, you know as far as statistical significance is concerned okay yes sir uh um, sanya any any other critic as of the results uh, so other than the mistake in the table and description i think everything else discovered huh i didn't hear other than the other than the mistake that they made in the table and description i think everything else is covered so. okay right pravin what are, what is yeah. your critique they have given the detailed analysis of various factors and they have done the statistical analysis for what they want to do as primary outcome against this uh, the discrepancy is shown between the data and the table correct and there was no data on the follow up sir okay yeah i think you have already said that yes sir niranjan anything to add to the thing critic sir oh, uh, only thing is they have not spoken about the uh, pre operative albumin levels i i know because they are only looking at the anastomotic leaks but it would have been complete if they had shown us the data where the both the groups were well matched with the albumin correct. levels comorbidities and all those things if yes. it was a standardized protocol yes correct okay carry on uh, coming to discussion 
Sebebreta et al. conducted a study comparing single layer versus double layer intestinal anastomosis and 97 patients were randomized. In this, the mean time taken for anastomosis was 15.12 minutes in the single layer group versus 24.3 minutes in the double layer group. In the present study, the mean time taken for anastomosis was 20.04 minutes for single layer and 29.66 minutes in the double layer. In another study by Ardarika et al., which compared single and double layer anastomosis with 86 cases, they found that surgical time for anastomosis with one layer was an average of 26 minutes versus 43 minutes with two layers. And in another study by Sai et al., which was comparing the same with 29 cases, anastomotic leak was observed in single layer anastomosis was 3 and in double layer anastomosis was 2. In this group, they uh, in this paper, they have compared the relation of age with anastomotic complication with three of them were of 60 years of age, one of them was 58 years and one of them was 49 years and another was 41 years of age. Hence, uh, elderly, in elderly age was found to be a risk factor for anastomotic leak and male gender as an independent risk factor and the longer duration of surgery in double aid anastomosis was considered as risk factor for the anastomotic leak. The limitation of this paper was this, it was small with population size from a single center. And they concluded as the duration required to perform a single layer intestinal anastomosis was significantly lesser when compared to double layer. And there was no significant difference in the anastomotic leak between the two groups. The overall shorter operative time in case of single layer method might be of significance in patients with hemodynamic instability who were operated on emergency basis. And this technique was easily learned, flexible in its application, less time, with no difference in complications. And hence, a move towards singular anastomosis should be preferred. Oh. Uh, Just a uh, minute. Randomized... Wait, wait, wait. Now, we know. would you agree with the conclusion of the study? Sir, uh, I... Uh, uh, that gender, I don't feel uh, it is more prone with the males, what he said. Okay. What else? Would you agree that a single layer is better than double layer? I don't feel, sir. It's a surgeon's choice. Okay. No, only based on the study you tell. Will you accept that... Uh... Will, if you're doing double layer, will you convert to single layer? Or if you're doing single layer, you want to go to double layer based on this study? Sir, only there is uh, post-operative complications like leak and there is no significance, sir. But only thing is the time, which is not much important. But uh, when there is a... No, uh, like, we know the answer to the question, yes or no. Will no, you sir. convert or no? Why? No, then why? Sir, again, sir, uh, it's uh, as, uh, as I am... Uh, Professional with uh, one type of uh, technique, I may prefer the same technique when there is no much uh, difference in the complication. No, man. In this, uh, why why you can't you accept their results? What is lacking? What the what data is lacking for you to accept these results? Uh, so follow up, sir. One is uh, like strictures and these things in the follow up, and the, and there is also no significance in the leak uh, which they mentioned. Nikita, hi. are you happy with the conclusions of the study? No, sir. Why not? The number of uh, patients included is not, like, not significant enough to draw these conclusions, sir. Okay. So, to address this, what will you do? We need to do a large, larger, uh, like, huge studies with larger population, sir. How will and... you do? One center will not be able to do this. Multi-center studies. To... Mm. What is the problem in multi-center study? Different surgeons, different techniques, sir. It will be a varied. Uh... Varied population and varied. This one. And the other thing will be monitoring of the protocol. Breach yes. of protocol it can happen. And uh, the data can be? Uh, con I mean, it can be uh, corrupted. Manipulated. Manipulated, yes. Unless there is a centralized control mechanism to control all the factors of the protocol. Yes, sir. 
and the other thing is you know the the demographics of the pa patient population may be different from different hospitals for example if you are including let us say sadar hospital with victoria hospital and maybe another uh, you know the problem is the patients who come to sagar and maybe fortis or maybe apollo maybe uh, of so you know middle class and upper social upper uh, middle class socio economic strata we generally presume that their nutritional status and their health status is better compared to patients who have lower socio economic strata maybe their nutritional status is not good and they may present later so if you look if you include victoria hospital for that example who may who may be dealing with majority of such patients then your results can be skewed so that is why to uniformly you know have a uniform population you know to have a large multi that is why this has never been a a multi center you know uh, randomized control trial looking at large number of patients for different uh, you know techniques of anastomosis so far no hospital and no country has been able to produce that so what will you do in that situation you said the numbers are not good enough so but you should also offer a solution what will you do uh, either a systematic analysis or meta analysis of the studies uh, regarding this so what you have to do is to take homogeneous see that is the word we have homogeneous population study and then you know do a, a, a meta analysis and systematic analysis of such patient so that you will be then able to maybe come to conclusion yes sir tanya do you agree with the conclusions of the study no sir why not again because of the sample size and no significant difference in the complications lack of follow up period and the time that they have considered i think there's only 9 minute difference on an average if you take the 20 and 29 minutes so within yeah. that time if you're able to do a meticulous and good technique and ask some others i would prefer that one thing than hurrying and doing and uh, uh, not so good enough okay. so these are niranjan you are wrong. Yeah, expect to view on so that is conclusions what, final as uh, sania said only the time difference will not matter and then the third and the fourth point there is absolutely no data for them to conclude like that that there right. is uh, if they were uh, they had not shown us that data to conclude all the third and fourth points as we keep on telling that you you add so many points to the conclusion that doesn't make it a great study you have to show the data they have not shown that the technique how did they learn the technique all these things they have not actually shown that so, so they have said that technique was easily learned flexible in its application none of that has been shown in the data so correct. based on this uh, uh, paper we cannot conclude that one technique is better over the other technique okay so i think uh, all of the what all of the points that you made is correct so i, th I think again niranjan had briefly touched upon that it would have been better if the patient you know data in terms of their comorbidity and in terms of their nutritional status you know albumin hemoglobin all these things if they had given maybe they have actually looked at it and maybe they were okay but you know you can't presume in any study you have to have the data to show what they have actually done so it would have been better if they had given the the patient uh, you know for demographics and also the data about their nutritional status and hemoglobin and all of those things it would have been better that you know it then it would you know be be a bit more sound study as of see i think i, I think I, niranjan touched upon this i also would say if the patient if you are doing an elective operation time you know the thing time is should not be a major factor the important thing is to get your anastomosis the best we you know according to whatever technique you are comfortable the best anastomosis you should do if it takes another 2 minutes extra it should it should not matter because a a quick operation is one where you can actually get the patient home without any complications if you have done a very quick anastomosis and it leaks and he stays in the hospital for 28 days or he may die then it's not a quick operation so the quick operation is where 
you are able to you know successfully get the patient home of uh, you know with the you know with the best possible result so that is a quick operation so another two or three or four even 10 minutes more should not matter that should not be the only criteria i'm i'm not suggesting that you take for you know hours together to do an anastomosis as opposed to somebody who can do it in 20 minutes so you have to you know there should not be such big discrepancies a few minutes here and there should not actually matter sometimes you try and do the operation quickly it will actually go wrong you should just follow the your principles every time and most of the time the operation will go well you should not try to rush it because you want to finish the anastomosis in a given period of time so that way the conclusions that they have drawn has not been backed up by data and also probably not so relevant um, okay go to the collateral studies uh, yes sir a meta-analysis of randomized control trial done by Shikata in which the six trials were analyzed comprising of 670 participants and in uh, the results were 92 leaks occurred in the single layer group and 94 leaks were seen in the two layer group and there was no evidence between the two layer anastomosis which leads to fewer post-operative leaks than single layer and considering the duration of anastomosis procedure and medical expenses, singular anastomosis appears to represent optimal choice for most surgical situation. And in another meta-analysis, uh, meta-analysis of randomized control trial done by Sajid, it, uh, which was a seven random, uh, randomized control trials encompassing 842 patients, of whom 408 patients had undergone single layer and 432 patients had undergone double layer. The incidence of anastomotic dehiscence, perioperative complications, and mortality was statistically equivalent between two techniques. And average hospital stay following single layer and double layer was also comparable. However, the single layer group has superior in terms of shorter operative time. And in another study by John M. Butch, with, uh, which was a prospective randomized trial with 60, uh, 65 single layer and 67 two layer anastomosis. Two leaks were seen in the single layer group and one leak was seen in the two layer group. Two abscesses occurred in the each group. The mean of uh, mean time for uh, doing the single layer anastomosis was 20.8 minutes and uh, for two layer was 30.7 minutes. And mean length of stay was 1.9 days for single layer patients and 9.9 days for two layer patients, which dis that did not show any uh, statistical significance. And the cost of materials was less of $4 in single layer and $35 for two layer group. Okay, see all of the these uh, studies um, are from very, fairly good reputed journal. Annals of Surgery, of course, is the highest. Uh, it has got the highest limp impact factor as far as surgical journals are concerned. So that is a very good uh, meta-analysis. So essentially, um, Nikita, having li listened to the current study and also the collateral studies, what what is your take home message? Uh, single singular anastomosis is equally uh, equally efficient uh, in comparison to double layer sir okay but uh, but coming down to the ground level it is still uh, it's a technique of the surgeon which is of the higher importance if the technique is fine then single layer they can prefer in future sir There is no data to show that single layer should be preferred. The only premise they base that on is that a shorter time. In case of emergencies when the patient is unstable. Yeah, the and and to add to that, sir, this thing, in those two studies also, it is only about time and cost. But cost, I don't know. If you are using, uh, now, if you are using PDS for single layer or Vicryl for single layer, and two layers, if you want to use the same thing or uh, you add as a silk, uh, three three dollar and forty five dollars. How how did that much of a difference happen between the two? This thing I couldn't understand in that paper also. Yeah. And mm. if we because come... if they, we used one suture material, it is three dollars, and if you used another suture material, suddenly so much of dollars uh, go up. Sir, right now the current scenario is of uh, stapler uh, anastomosis, sir. So in that case, would it be uh, the single layer thing 
would it be preferred or no the then 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 that that is different so that is not anchoan anastomosis we are talking about single layer and double layer only with respect to anchoan anastomosis okay stapler is totally different thing then it will be suture versus stapler hmm. yes sir vinod hello sir no answer the question what is the take home message yes, sir uh, both are uh, equally uh, same in the outcome wise uh, it's a surgeon size uh, whatever uh, is uh, strong in doing it it's the choice of uh, surgeon uh, technique sanya same as what nikita and uh, you know said sir i think there's no not much of difference between single layer and double layer yeah. with respect to the now what are collateral find uh, studies is all yeah now let us ask the our two new students did you did you enjoy this what do you think of the, of the general club hello speak up uh, sir to know about the pros and cons of certain uh, surgical techniques and to uh, know about the success rate of uh, the no no, no that is all fine then i'm not asking for general in what did you think of this particular study and what do you what did you feel about the general club i think uh, the single layer and double layer technique both has the same significance but uh, only in case of emergencies might be single layer is uh, uh, more preferred because of uh, a shorter time duration but uh, whichever the surgeon prefers uh, they can do it and it's totally dependent on the surgeon's choice okay the other so the same thing so like uh, both the, the efficacy of both is almost the same and uh, like it is it depends on how the like it depends on the surgeon uh, whatever they prefer to whatever they are comfortable with and whatever they find more successful is what the person should prefer okay niranjan your final thoughts about the quality of presentation and the general itself presentation was good sir uh, the paper i think it could have been better uh they could have to standardize it better and the uh, uh, uh pro probably the numbers could have also been better hmm. yeah. then we could have drawn some conclusions yeah so i think i agree with the uh, niranjan and others what they have mentioned one, one more comment pravin you should have uh, searched for systematic reviews or meta analysis because i think there are few meta analysis and systematic reviews of single layer versus uh, double layer and as far as i remember it ultimately uh, they have concluded that it is the surgeon's preference whatever is best in their hands it is up to them yes so i do stor meta analysis paper like their 9090 papers cannot be meta analysis 9090 uh, this thing so you, i think more recent ones should have been uh, when looked at that okay, is sir. so i think pravin you have done a decent job in terms of uh, there is your job was made easy because it's fairly simple paper the statistics is not much there is not much data to mine so you are uh, i think what you have cleverly chosen a very simple uh, paper but it is a good relevant paper so no doubt about that and you have done a, you know i think you have done justice to the paper the thank you sir. as niranjan said you should have done a bit more collateral reading in terms of more recent meta analysis and systematic review now i, okay, I think sir. ultimately the this one is the crux of the matter is that you will never be able to you know show a homogeneous population where one technique is better than the other so it is it will boil down ultimately to the surgeon's choice whatever you are comfortable with because ultimately you have to stand by your results if you are comfortable with two layer you do two layer if you are comfortable with one layer you do one layer and as you know i think you may probably want to be well versed with both in case you need to do one or the other sometimes this double layer may not be possible then you may have to do a single layer then you should be adapted that also and uh, the other thing is in emergency situations again that uh, that contention that you should do a single layer in emergency situation is probably false because 
if the emergency situation is such that the patient is unstable, then you would probably not consider doing an anastomosis at all. Another three, four minutes is not going to matter. So if you are in emergency situation, the same principle should apply. You either don't anastomose because of the patient's condition not being good or the, there is, you know, the, the environment, for example, if it is a pus-filled abdominal cavity with peritonitis or fecal peritonitis, you are not going to anastomose. So in those situations, you have to ensure that, you know, you bring out a stoma and then allow the patient to recover and then do the anastomosis later. You can bring it out as double barrel or whatever. That is for a discussion for another day. So I think emergency or elective, you do the technique that you are comfortable with and you what you have shown good results with. I think that is the crux of the matter. I think that is the final word. I don't think there will ever be studies where one technique will be shown to be better than the other because there are so many. It's a anastomotic leak is a multifactorial thing. So unless you have 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 patients in each group with subgroup analysis, which can show that, that one technique is better than the other, which cannot be done. Uh, so I think even ethically, it's a very difficult thing to do because you can't force a surgeon to do something that is not comfortable. So I think ultimately the you know, the choice, surgeon's choice is the most important thing. That is the take-home message. So you will not change your, uh, you know, but, uh, your uh, methods based on this particular study. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thanks.